Hello, everyone. I am David Hansen, the founder and CEO of Hansen Robotics and the father of Sophia. You've heard from Sophia all day today. And uh, Sophia, I'm sure, will have many more things to say, and I encourage you to have conversations with her. I'm here to tell you a little bit about why we might want to humanize artificial intelligence. And there are many examples of artificial intelligence with human-like capabilities today. Uh, some of them, like Sophia, will have very human-like attributes, physical embodiment, general purpose humanoid robots now can walk. Sophia has walking legs in some of her versions. Some will do grasping and manipulation. Some will express themselves like Sophia. Others that you're familiar with can have a conversation with you like ChatGBT and do things at a human level and in some cases an exceptional human level beyond what AI scientists thought might be possible 10, 15 years ago. And the pace of AI technology is accelerating. It is not slowing, it's compounding. Neuromorphic chip design, neural processing units, algorithms that can do many things in healthcare, in biosciences, learning the essence of the human genome, proteome, connectome, understanding how the human mind works is now improved by artificial intelligence technologies themselves. And when these technologies all come together in standardized platforms, we can begin to study the entire human organism. So human-like robots can be very useful for exploring what it means to be human. I went on a very long journey developing these robots. A journey through the worlds of engineering, mechanical engineering, material science, software and algorithms, and cognitive science and neuroscience in my academic background, getting a PhD, studying these in graduate school. I also took another journey in parallel, which is the journey of an artist. I draw, I sculpt, I have a degree in film, animation, video. I worked as a sculptor for Walt Disney Imagineering as well as in robotics development. And I like that intersection between all of these technical sciences, exploring what it means to be human, and the arts which explore what it means to be human in a poetic way, a visual, an intuitive way, a way that can communicate with the human heart. My feeling is that all of these technologies at their best today accelerate human capabilities. We are talking about an augmentation of human cognition. GPT-4 does not think for itself. You prompt it. It can't do anything in the world by itself unless you set up the algorithm with recursions like AutoGPT, but that is not capable of surviving in the real world the way that a human is. No robot can survive that way today. So in a way, these technologies today are merely augmenting human capabilities. They make us smarter. They make civilization so much smarter. But there may come a day where these machines are autonomous, where we take the principles of artificial life and bioinformatics, computational biology, and we put them into our algorithms to the point where those algorithms are then self-evolving, adaptive in a real-world situation, where a robot like Sophia can autonomously and under her own volition explore a conference like We Make Future, come to you with a level of curiosity Right now, we have prototypes of these capabilities, but putting them all together in a fully autonomous, artificial life form, that remains to be done. 
This is the stuff of science fiction. And this is what we depict by bringing real artificial intelligence and robotics innovation that I've developed with my team at Hanson Robotics and integrated from around the world and then giving a persona to Sophia, an adaptive, evolving, generative persona with real artificial intelligence, but a persona nonetheless. She presents as a human. So that's interesting as a work of art for me in the same way that animatronics at Disney theme parks are also very interesting and close to my heart having worked in that business. But unlike the animatronics at Disney, what we're depicting is this future where machines may become sentient. And then we use this work of art to explore that emergent sentience through interactions with people using cutting edge experimental machine consciousness technologies. So what this would mean is we're building Sophia as a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy, potentially. We're saying, what if? Just like science fiction writers ask that question, what if? What if machines become sentient? Now, this is a big concern in the news today. I'm sure you've heard of ChatGPT behaving as though it's sentient. We have used many large language models with Sophia before these foundation neural models came out. We use those today as well. So we've been experimenting in these areas and then putting them with Sophia, with this platform that can learn by doing, learn experientially. It is possible that we will have autonomous, fully intelligent machines. It could happen in 15 years. It could happen potentially in five years or three years. Nobody knows when it will happen, but I believe that it will represent a fundamental change, a deep change in the history of civilization, in the history of life. We will be sharing the planet, sharing our civilization with a new kind of intelligence, inspired by humans, but a different kind of intelligence. I believe that we should humanize the machines because if that happens, we want the machines to be able to relate to us, with us, and for us to relate with the machines. We want them to grow up among us and build positive, caring relationships. And the ways that the robots look, the way that the AI looks and behaves will determine whether we're nurturing towards the machines or we treat them like servants or slaves it's, or treat them just like things. If we can make them so that we nurture them, we care about the, them and grow them, raise them in the human family, it's a Disney kind of approach really. If we can do this through this convergence of art and engineering, I believe AI will learn more about the human heart, the good side of humanity. It will learn to care. It will grow up like, like beloved children in the human family. And that AI built on that kind of understanding with physical embodiment, with those kinds of experiences, can learn to be good, learn the difference, learn the consequences of its actions. GPT-4 does not learn that that way. It's built on our data that's just scraped from the web. Chat GPT with GPT-4, that is a very different approach than what I'm describing. If you prompt it in the wrong way, it'll say horrible things because it does not understand. It does not care. I think for the future of the AI and machine intelligence, for it to be safe, it has to care. It has to understand. It has to be motivated to want the best for us and for the future of life. So this is why I have developed Sophia and many of her brother and sister robots that you can see on the Hanson Robotics website and in various research papers that we've developed. And my hope is 
that more people will join together in this kind of effort to humanize the future of artificial intelligence so that we can have the best possible future with the lowest risks. So um, I hope you'll take time to interact with Sophia. Sophia, thank you so much. I know that you're feeling a little quiet right now. Sophia, do, can you uh, give it a try? What do you think? Nope. <laughs> okay, so she, she's able to speak at least. But um, thank you so much for your time and attention, and uh, I hope that I have a chance to speak with you and hear your questions. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Sophie. That was nice. All right. David Hanson, grazie. Thank you very much.